Hey there, friends. It's Nick. This is episode 437 of the Story Hacker podcast. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. I hope you've had a good week. I've had a really good week. I've done some great work. I've done a lot of reading. I've done quite a lot of thinking, which I always enjoy, and working stuff out. And you have those little moments. It's funny. You have them when you're writing a novel, when something just just clicks together and you go, oh, that's nice. But you have it. I mean, I used to find it in the agency. I still find it now with this work, of course, because I'm storytelling. But those little moments where you get that little kind of little explosion, that little bit of insight, that little thing that makes you go, oh, now I get something that I didn't get before. And talking about that, I'm going <laughs> to, I've mentioned over the past couple of episodes, I wanted to talk more about systems thinking. I have talked about it before on this podcast, but um, it's one of those things. If you're like me, it can take us, certainly it can take me, quite a long time, decades sometimes, to really get to grips with key ideas. But, but if we can do that, if we can groove them into our mind, I think it really can help us. We can use them as tools on our business and on our clients' businesses. And this happened this week where uh, I was doing some consultancy for, for a chap and, you know, of course I'm about storytelling, I'm about copywriting, um, but I also get a business and I was able to give him a, in some sense, a kind of systems thinking perspective on what he wanted me to do. And I think, you know, this is the advantage of being at least curious, but, you know, at, at best multidisciplinary. Right. Um, but anyway, in the last episode, I talked about how your value proposition could and perhaps should be as useful inside your business as it is outside. Yeah. And if you haven't heard that, go back to 436 and have a listen. But there's an element of systems thinking to this. So if you remember, Systems, there's a couple of really key ideas in system thinking. The most basic one is that the, the value of a system, the result of a system is emergent. It emerges from the interaction of all the separate parts of the system. And, um, you know, the classic example of this is the car, right? You know, a car as a system will get you from your house to the pub, okay? But if you were to dissemble the car and lay it all out in your garden you would still have all the parts but you wouldn't have a car <laughs> do you know what I mean you you wouldn't have the value because the value emerges from the whole thing and the, so that's the first key concept and um, you know we can see that in business right you know in in the best sense hopefully in the aspirational sense our businesses are systems to create value for our clients and our customers and therefore for ourselves and our employees and our partners. Does that make sense? So your business is a system. Now before I've talked about how you know your kind of marketing funnel might be a system. So say for example you have a I don't know an email capture form on your homepage which puts people's emails into the, your newsletter list and then you know you send out an email from your newsletter which is about your new product people click through that link to your new product page and they can buy it and, and everyone's happy that's a really simple sort of marketing funnel but it's also a system right because it has discrete elements and the value emerges from the whole okay so that's a pretty simple idea isn't it but one of the second things that, that um, comes out of systems thinking is this idea that you can't just take a piece of your car and optimise the piece of your that piece of your car and expect the whole thing to work any better. In fact, people who really study systems thinking can sh have shown that very often, actually, the the overall result degrades because when we focus on one thing and optimize one thing it's not necessarily gonna help the whole system so that sounded a bit lame let me give you an example in that process I talked about with your um, your website 
So imagine that you, you got someone onto your list from the homepage and then you sent them a newsletter about your, um, your new product. Now, a lot of traditional marketing, tactical based kind of stuff would say, what you need to do is you need to make all these changes to the homepage in order to optimize the number of people who are signing up to a newsletter. That's one bit, we want to optimize that bit. If we can double that, we can double the amount of people who come through at the end, right? And they might also say, let's look at that email that you're sending. If we can optimize that, if we can double the number of people who click through on that email, we can double the amount of business you'll get. And now if we do both of those things, you'll get four times as much business. But of course, that's not always true. And it's one of the real frustrating fallacies of um, so much internet kind of marketing, kind of secrety kind of stuff, is that it isn't always true. And in fact, you know, when I was at, when I was working at the agency, we did loads and loads of experiments um, for things for different kind of clients. And do you know what? If you do just optimize one bit, very often actually the result at the end doesn't you know it isn't better and sometimes it's actually worse and I remember sometimes being so frustrated because I didn't really understand what was going on and the reason is is actually pretty simple um, you know to take a really extreme example you can optimize you could optimize that form on your home page by promising something that you then didn't deliver now, no, I was going to say no one would do that. Of course, people do that all the time. But, but you, because you're, you know, smart and successful and good looking, you wouldn't do that. Because also because you know that that is a short term play. But if you take that to an extreme, if you promise something that you then don't deliver, the overall system suffers, even though your throughput through that email thing could be two times, four times, ten times better. So when I was talking yesterday about the value proposition and the way that you can use that as a direction for your business, it really tessellates nicely into this idea of the overall story you're telling. Because when we think about um, optimising our marketing system or optimizing our business we really need to take that systems view we need to take that holistic view you know what is the result of this particular optimization of this particular bit going to be on the whole and one of the ways that we can make this much easier is by having a an established story an established tone of voice having established values something i'm going to talk about values in a couple of podcast time but um, because it allows us to make sensible decisions on the way through so that we yes we I'm not saying you shouldn't optimize your homepage or you shouldn't optimize your email or you, or you shouldn't optimize your business you should but we have to keep our eyes on the prize and having that that story that mission that sense of kind of purpose is the thing that allows you to Ah, to keep in mind the overall, the overall goal of your business. What are you optimizing for? What is the value you provide? What is the emergent thing that you need to come out of your business? And I think it can be particularly useful in bigger companies where, you know, you're maybe not looking at everything yourself. You're not doing everything yourself. If you get your like your value proposition and your you know your story straight. It is an easy way of making sure that there aren't people who are doing what makes sense in a local small setting right, or one page or one email or whatever at the detriment of the whole. And one of the things I've been doing for a client this year um, is going through their whole process, really, their website, their emails, um, you know, their whole, their story, their whole kind of global kind of tone of voice and making sure that it all matches that it's all pulling in the same direction so that when we're optimizing things we are optimizing thing to a sort of systematic system kind of level blimey that's 10 minutes well done 
<laughs> you're still here. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about my PS5, which will be much shorter and <laughs> much lighter. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. And remember, your story means business. <laughs>